Hey guys, welcome to another home lab series video here today. In today's video, I'll be actually playing around with YubiKey. So this one is actually a uh, YubiKey plus an NFC um, built into it, so you can do use it for multiple kinds of different authentications um, with both the USB A and NFC. But um, I haven't actually used this for like two or three years now since I went to reinvent, got a few, and I was like, I don't really need it because I just use like my phone two factor essentially for most of my stuff nowadays. Um, so I'm like, I don't really have a use for it. But I was talking with some friends um, today and they were like, you could try it out with some SSH key authentication and have it validate your SSH key um, session thing. And I was like, wait, what? So then I went, okay, you, I went down the rabbit hole of like, this is actually kind of cool. So I got it working and I wanted to make a video about this to show you guys, if you guys ever, you know, just have some YubiKeys lying around, you want to um, make your SSH authentication even more secure. Um, this is how you can do it. So let's get some started and have some fun here. All right. So the first thing to note with doing this, um, so in your essentially both your client and your service so you need to make sure that you have the ssh version at least like 8.2 i believe i think that's when um they in, they actually allowed for like the authentication with like the fd fido um and stuff for security keys so if you are writing like oracle linux or like you know an older version of rel um it may not have essentially 8.2 or higher because a lot of my VMs, I'm running Oracle Linux 8, and the latest package in the Red Hat repository is 8.0. Um, so um, you might have to upgrade. I personally didn't upgrade any of those, so I just downloaded like a CentOS 9 like container, and then I just used that um, because those packages are more up-to-date. So depending on the route that you take and what machines you have, you'll want to make sure that you have at least 8.2 or higher So because that's when it started supporting it. If you don't, it just won't work. Um, then... Second thing is you should unbox your YubiKey. So you got your YubiKey. The Yub I didn't just drop it. I, I definitely didn't drop it. <clears throat> All right. As I was saying, the YubiKey essentially has like a little button and this a little circular button that one, after you plug it in, you, it'll light up. Uh, and when, when you're ready to, to be pushed, you just hold it and that's it. Um, so what uh, we'll do here is one, plug it in in my computer won't really do anything to it right now, but what we'll do is actually create the key on my um, Windows so, uh, computer here. So what we'll do is SSH key gen, and you can see the command I've, I've already played around with. So T and the ES or ACDSA, which is like your normal kind of SSH key, but, or at least what the normal new version is kind of going for, and then hyphen SK. So the hyphen SK is the type for a security key, essentially. So this will actually make it prompt for, hey, I want you have to add a security key. Then we'll just do the file, and then we'll just name this YubiKey, essentially, in this case. So you'll see now that there is a pop-up, but you don't see it on my screen, apparently. So it doesn't actually pop up. So I might have to take, like, screenshots and import it into the video. So you'll see a pop-up right here on the screen <laughs> um, that you'll select security key and then hit next. Then another pop-up will come up that you also don't see, which is interesting because I was wondering, it just doesn't show up. Okay, okay. Then you hit security key setup, you hit okay. You'll see another pop-up to continue. You hit okay again, and then it'll tell you to touch the security key. So I'm gonna go touch it. And then it will say pass key saved. Then you hit OK. Now you can even do more, you know, security stuff where it will you can enter a passphrase. This is like normal SSH like key key gen. It will just enter it. In this case, I don't need an extra passphrase, so we'll just hit enter. And then you essentially got your fingerprint. So I'll have to import all the like pop-ups apparently. But what you can do here now is we can do type. Um, dot SSH and then the pub key so that we can see what the public key is because we will need the public key essentially to be on the server. So what we'll do is SSH root at one of my servers containers that I just created for CentOS 9 and we will edit the authorized keys and paste the key in here. So you can see that this key is a little bit unique because it, it starts with the SK so it, it denotes so SSH will know that it's running an SK. Um, a security key, and then we'll hit enter. And then we can confirm on the server that my SSH is also greater than 2.8.2. Uh, so what we can do here 
is now we can SSH um, to it. So we'll do SSH hyphen I so that we can specify the key because if you don't specify the key, it won't actually use the key. And then we'll log in to the server. And then here it will say confirm user presence. There's another pop pop up saying sign in with your pass key, which I'll have to take screen slides. We'll select the security key, hit next. Then we will have to touch the key again. So we'll hold the key. And then the pre user presence confirmed. And you can see that we have successfully logged in. So um, that essentially is how you can set it up so that it will confirm with your security key that your, you know, the SSH key that you're using actually is, uh, you know, secure and confirmed. So. Um, that's pretty much it for this video, but hopefully I will spend probably the rest of this weekend or the week to figure out what other cool things I can do with this and maybe make some more videos about it. So um, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!